is Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on Birdsong, and this is page one. So this is going to be fun, and I noticed I got in here without my tape, but I think I already got it on. So you're going to start, these are two pockets that are going to go on top. You're going to start with two flaps, and these are um, eight and three-eighths by eight inches tall, eight and three-eighths by eight. You're going to score it half inch and four and a half inches. And so when you fold it in on itself, you'll see that there's a little bit of a gap between the edge of this flap and the hinge. And that's just so as you add your paper and whatnot, it doesn't uh, get bound up on the hinge area. So you're gonna need two of those, a left and a right. <clears throat> and I'm going to dry fit that. It's going on a pocket page. This is an eight by eight pocket page. And you uh, build this by having two eight and a half by eights, score it half inch on the eight and a half inch side, and then you put those two together to make a pocket page. And that's in the base album tutorial. I don't go, I don't cover it in um, in this video. And there we go. So these are going to open out and out. And then on top of this, we're going to have these two pockets. They're actually not a full pocket. They're gonna come across as a triangle. You're gonna start with a, a five by four and a half, five by four and a half. You're gonna score a half inch on the four and a half inch side and a half inch on the five inch side, just like that. Now I'm not gonna install these yet because I am gonna use a decorative border here and I'm not going to cut this edge out until I have my designer paper because I'm going to cut it at the same time, and I'll go over that in the tutorial. But um, for planning purposes, go ahead and cut a five by four and a half and then score on those two sides and set it aside. When we add the decorative, decorative paper, we will add a fancy edge, and I will go over that as we get a little closer. It's too hard to do that once you lay these down. Okay, that is it for page one. Hey everybody, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and I want to show you um, where I'm at on page one. So one of the things I want to do is a decorative edge on this diagonal pocket. So I already pre-cut one so you could see what I've done and I'm going to show you how I achieved this on the left side. So first of all we started with and I, I taped everything down so I wouldn't misplace it. So I'm going to un, untape it because I'm going to show you the whole process. So we started with these um, five by four and a half. You're going to score those two sides. So then the next thing I did is I cut the piece of paper that I want to lay on here. Now I use a 1 16th inch border. So it is 1 8 inch narrower and 1 8 inch uh, shorter and then centered you get a 16th inch border so depending on what size border you want go ahead and trim your decorator paper down an eighth inch smaller quarter inch whichever whatever your preference is once you've done that test it and i see that's what i want so now i'm going to do my decorative edge so to get a perfectly matted decorative edge you're going to push your paper flush to the top and to the edge, the open what are going to be the two open edges of this diagonal pocket, and secure them in place. So you can see it's pushed all the way up to that corner. I'm going to keep checking to make sure I stay in frame. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my decorative uh, edge, and I'm going to line up this edge with this corner, and the same thing on this side. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna tape it in place. And I'm gonna turn it over and check to make sure it did not shift in the process, especially since I'm holding it and I'm not against a hard surface. So I can see here that it's perfectly aligned with the edge of the die cut 
and it looks like we're okay on this side too. So now I'm going to run it through my machine and I'm um, using a big, big kick. And the, uh, the um, die that I'm using is a border die and it's six inches across. <clears throat> So at this point, I would recommend opening your flanges because it'll just go through the trimmer easier. Otherwise, it's gonna keep the two edges elevated and it might not cut all the way through the cardstock. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Okay, now, as I remove the die, we have an edge, and this is just um, washi tape. And we can take this off, and it's just a little bit attached here, so I'm going to trim it with my scissors. And I'm going to go ahead and miter my corners. And now when I apply the designer paper, you can see I've got a 16th inch border even on the design side. So if you don't have um, a die cut machine and uh, dies, the other thing you can do is you can create a template. So you can make a swerve and you would do the same process where you trim down this piece to the border you want. So if you want, say, a quarter inch or an eighth, an eighth inch border, it would look something like this all the way around. When you're ready to cut, you're gonna push it up to the open edges. I'm just doing this because it's flush. Push it up to the open edges and then use your template if you created a swirl or if you just wanna freehand cut it and then you're cutting both the cardstock and the designer paper and then you push it back down to center it and you get that nice border. So you can either create um, a template or what I've done in previous videos when I didn't want to use my die cut machine because I was too lazy to get it out, that's what it boils down to, is I just cut a diagonal. So I just went from the edge of the four and a half inch side up to the five inch side and just cut a straight line. But again, make sure you're pushing your paper all the way up to the open edges on, on um, the cardstock before you do that and that should give you a beautiful border so that's my tip for this and i also have a tutorial that shows how to do this and it's just a you know five or six minute video that just shows how to how to use edge border dies so that's it i'm getting um the rest of my papers lined up so we'll start gluing this stuff down in just a minute or taping it down bye okay everyone we're on page one and we are getting ready to decorate so the two um, diagonal pockets that I asked you to set aside earlier, we are going to apply to the page now. So I've marked right and left. So they're gonna go right on top of the left and right flap, like so. And I I saw this earlier, I don't know. There, um, I had actually used that die, the last time I used the die, I was cutting um, a metallic paper and it and it left a little trace of it behind that I have to keep flicking off but I think that's that's gonna do it oh yeah yeah so it's kind of weird but anyway um, so that these are good you can see a little bit of it down here too uh, but that'll be covered up by the designer paper so we're gonna lay these in first and they're just gonna go flush with the t um, the edge the outside edges of this flap. And I already have tape on it. So let's get them down. And these flaps are gonna be, this diagonal pocket is gonna be used, we're gonna have an insert in it, and that's what's gonna hold everything closed when, um, when this page is done. We're not gonna use any magnets on it. <clears throat> This is a little challenging because it's folded over and over on itself, so it's not exactly flat. So just take your time. 
There we go. There's one. I like this. Um, I like to come up with new ideas where um, I can keep some of the features closed without a magnet. It doesn't always work out, but it's nice to uh, to have that sort of variety. Okay, here we go. You can still see traces of that. There we go. Okay, so uh, I chose these stripes to go right here. And I think that's gonna look lovely. And then these are the panels that are gonna go right inside, like so. So these are going to be a little bit, oh, that looks too small. Did I do that right? Ooh, actually, I think I overtrimmed this. Oh, I hope not, but I might have. Yeah, see, that's too much of a border. I overtrimmed it, so I might have to recut this. Um, it's funny because I got one right and one wrong. That's weird. Very strange, but definitely solvable. So this is from the eight by eight collection pack, which means I have more of it, which is nice. Um, so because I've over trimmed this, I'm gonna set it aside and I am going to, trim another piece. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and add these pieces. And so I'm going to, anything that fits, I'm going to go ahead and glue down and then we'll come back to that piece that needs to be retrimmed. And I can definitely use that piece um, and I'll show you why in, in a minute. Um, it doesn't want to flow today. I'm getting to the end of the bottle so I can, it's always a little bit thicker. In spite of my efforts, I don't get my cap on as often as I should. And uh, my glue starts to dry out. There we go. And see, that's gonna look like this. It looks very nice. Very nice. Here's my second piece. going to go ahead and trim this out. So what I was going to say is the one that I've over trimmed, which is this one, I can use the, the other side, the back side, because the panel, this panel is narrower. And it looks like that's what I trimmed it down for instead of for the front. So this, um, the second uh, hinge on this flap is an eight inch smaller than the top so i can definitely repurpose this so it definitely won't go to waste but i am going to go ahead and retrim the whole thing out from this eight by eight because i want the pattern to be continuous so i'm going to trim it here and then i'll go over here and trim it this way because when it's closed i want you to see this whole pattern in its continuous state and i'm going to use I just realized I hadn't trimmed down the height and when I trimmed down the height I took off my um, little mark so I gotta redo that sorry 
Now I want this to be continuous pattern, so I'm not going to trim from this side, I'm going to trim from this side. Let's see how we did. Mm. I can go a little more. <clears throat> Okay, I think that's good. I'm going to ink it, and we're going to glue these down. So th this can be tricky getting it into the pocket. So one of the things that I typically do when I'm trying to slide paper into a pocket is the leading edge that's going into the pocket, whether it's diagonal or traditional rectangular pocket, I'm going to leave without glue um, so I can slide it in and not have to worry about it dragging or catching before I've got it completely placed. So that means this, this corner down here, I'm going to try to leave without glue and it'll make it easier to slide in. You don't have to worry about it pulling back out because the paper is going to be so far in, even if you put something in the pocket, it's not really going to follow it back out. Oh. Making a mess. <clears throat> There we go. Looks pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna slip this in, make sure it's trimmed out right. <clears throat> and it needs to be trimmed just a little bit more. So I'm gonna take, oh gosh, I don't know. It's not much. Took this much off. <laughs> however much this is. Not much. Um, I'm going to test it again. I think that'll do it. Yep, that looks perfect. So now we ink the edges and glue this down. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. And you can see how the pattern's carrying across, which I think looks lovely. I'm just going to use my bone folder to make sure everything is pushed into place. Okay, now we're ready to start on the inside. So I've chosen this, and it's from the 8x8 collection. So again, the, the this is from 8x8. I can't remember what this is from. This is also from the 8x8. Is that right? It's the same scale, yeah. So the stripes are from the 8x8, and this is from the 8x8, and this is the signature page of the 8x8, and it's going to be the centerpiece here.
really tight. <clears throat> I'm really close to my hinge here. It still closes, but it's very tight. Okay, so the next thing is <clears throat> we have these lovely feathers. Actually, I think this is what I had planned. Let's see if I've got them cut the right. Yeah, these are actually supposed to go on the smaller flap. And then I trim these out to go like so. And you can do this or you can do them both in the same direction. I haven't decided, but I'll make my mind up after I get the two outside panels laid down. And yes, they are trimmed right and inked already. So this should go pretty quick. Okay, now here we go. We've got these four pieces. And there's writing on here, so you might wanna check closely to make sure you're getting the orientation right. Okay, so that's um, layout A. This would be B, where it's um, across from each other, and I think I, think I kinda like that. So we are gonna color block these and I'm gonna lay down the feathers first and then we're gonna trim down this piece uh, if required. It looks like it might fit just, just right, but if not, we'll trim down the blue piece um, if it needs a little bit taken off. But it looks like they're both perfect. So again, we start with the, the feathers. And honestly, I don't know what this, what this is from. I have to look. I'm not sure if it's eight by eight or um, 12 by 12, but I will check before I go to the next one. I think it's eight by eight just because of the size of the feathers. by 12 as you can see there's the scales difference so this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack not patterns and solids collection pack okay oh actually yeah so that's the 12 by 12 and then this we need to is also from the 12 by 12 so the this is the flip side of that and then this is from the patterns and solids. So the 12 by 12 patterns and solids. Okay, there we go. So patterns and solids, 12 by 12, 12 by 12 collection pack. And then the center piece is eight by eight. Mm. 
<clears throat> okay, I'm double checking the handwriting to make sure I'm putting it in right side up. That's why it was pausing. Sometimes the um, handwriting is, it's hard to detect. Okay, beautiful. Let's see if I need to do any trimming here. And can you believe that? I didn't even plan this. It's shocking to me, but it's working out perfect. Yep, ready to go. So we still need these two panels covered, and I think I trimmed out a couple pieces, but I don't see them. So I'm going to shuffle a little bit, try to locate them. Okay, I'm going to pause. I'll be right back with these two pieces. Okay, I've got these papers trimmed out for the last part of page one. Oh, I, I, I always waffle. Oh. What do I think about adding a strip here and here? I kind of like it. Maybe I'll do that. Um, let's see. Or the alternate would be the heavy pattern with a solid strip. What do y'all think? I think, I think, I think. Oh, it's so hard. I think I'll go with the dark side up and then add some embellishment. And that's what I'm going with. I'm going to ink these. And 
I don't think I've mentioned it, but I am using Powder Puff Mahogany, which is my favorite. Um, we were out of stock for a little bit, but I think they're back in stock. And, you know, this is one of the ones, as long as they carry or they produce it, we'll carry it. Every couple of years, they go through and um, change their colors. And they'll always have a dark brown. And I usually go for the the darkest one they have um but they like the last time it was espresso now it's mahogany it may change to something else at some point but when it does i'll let you know and um i'll mention it in the video so i think i'm going to do like an offset so a top and a bottom so the other one alternative would be um a center line which also looks good What do you guys think? I'm listening. <laughs> I can't hear you. There's some glue there. You know what? I think I want to do down here. So I want to come up about an inch. And this ruler is an inch and a quarter. So let's see how that looks. Too big. All right, I'm gonna eyeball it and then I'll measure the other one. I'm going with the bottom because when you open it up, I just wanna let you guys know what my design decision is. We've already split these this panel in half. So I don't know if I want to continue that pattern or if I want it to look different. And I think I want it to look different. But it's an easy decision to change if you want. And then the pattern that I'm using is just the flip side of this. So when you cut this out, you, you'll wind up with some trim pieces. So don't cut a special piece. You should be able to find something suitable in your scraps. And I haven't mentioned it, but I will measure this and tell you roughly how wide this strip is. It is a half inch. So if you wanted to do a blue stripe, that would work too. In fact, if you did a blue stripe, you could carry on the stripe all the way across both. This pattern right here. Man, I, got, I feel clumsy today. I can't seem to hang on to anything. Okay, so I'm going to use this ruler to help me keep a visually straight line across. much for yeah it's it's fine it needs to nudge over a little yep good good you could also draw a reference line if you wanted okay there we go that is most of page one so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to create an insert that's going to hold all of this closed and I think I want a seven by seven. Seven and a half by seven and a half. Let's try that. Let's see what we think about this. Yeah, so that's going to leave a nice little frame around it. So it is going to be a seven by seven. I haven't picked my designer paper for this yet um, I just want to make sure this is the size I want first and, and I like that um, it doesn't have to be this big all you really need to make sure of is that when you have something in this pocket that it spans these two diagonal pockets um, even if it was smaller and I don't have an example of something smaller handy um, but it has to go fit between these two okay so I need to come up with um, some design paper for this and then um, 
when I once I do, I'll come back and we'll cover this. And uh, that'll be it for page one. So thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. Be back soon with this last piece. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and I went ahead and filled out uh, what is the seven by seven and a half insert that's going to go into page one. And I just did it offline. It's pretty straightforward. Um, what I did was I came down uh, three quarters of an inch and then I cut basically two lines from the 8x8 eight eight, um, collection pack. So this is what's on the flip side. So basically I used the same piece of paper, cut a strip, cut a strip, flipped it over. So you've got the alternate pattern and then the rest of it was used down here. So it'll come from your 8x8 eight eight collection pack and I made this. So I'm still thinking I might want to do something a little more to give it some pizzazz, but I don't know what yet. And you'll have to wait and see in the walkthrough reveal. So that's it for page one. Thanks, everybody. Be back soon with page two.